Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. There are many incredible structures on the Giza Plateau, from the Great Pyramid to the Sphinx and the Wall of the Crow, but by far one of the most incredible and also one of the most ancient is the Valley Temple of Khafre. Located 500 metres from the second largest Giza pyramid and in close proximity to the Great Sphinx, the Valley Temple is one of the best preserved ancient temples in Egypt, surviving thousands of years nearly intact, having been covered by sand until 1852 when it was discovered by Auguste Mariette. The temple's limestone walls measure 45 metres and their thickness decreases exponentially, which makes the temple look somewhat like a mastaba. The walls are covered with polished red granite both inside and out, while the floor is made of white alabaster. Egyptologists say that the temple served both for the pharaoh Khafre's mummification process and his purification before it was laid to rest in the pyramid, something that I certainly don't subscribe to as there is no evidence for any such claim. There is evidence that Khafre renovated or reused the valley temple, but the style of stonework certainly looks to be far more ancient than dynastic history. Thanks to the inventory stealer, we know that at some point in antiquity it was known as the House of Osiris. The valley temple is amazingly preserved. The floor is made of alabaster, as are the walls of some of the smaller chambers, although the bulk of the structure is made from limestone. There are two entrances on the eastern wall and one in the west that leads to the T-shaped hall which has 23 statue bases which apparently held statues of King Khafre, one of which made of diorite is today stored in Cairo Museum. The temple is devoid of paintings and inscriptions just like the pyramids but has 16 square red granite pillars which would have once supported the roof and many of the columns are still in place today. This hall was dimly lit by small slotted windows which were each positioned to cast a small ray of light on each of the Khafre statues. The temple is without doubt a true wonder of ancient engineering. It has a distinct architectural style similar only to the Sphinx temple located next to it and also the incredible Assyrian temple at Abydos. Each of these temples feature incredible detail that experts have a difficult time explaining. There are huge amounts of megalithic stones used in its construction and the core structure is built entirely of massive limestone blocks quarried from next to the Great Sphinx. They each exceed 100 to 150 tons in weight, some of which were lifted more than 40 feet into the air. As John Anthony West and Robert Schock have pointed out, many of the core limestone blocks are actually incredibly weathered, more so than the blocks which cover them. The latter therefore shows that at some point in its history, the Valley Temple was renovated and I would guess by King Khafre. As well as the size of the blocks in the Valley Temple, arguably the most mind-boggling aspect of it is just how well the blocks have been fitted together. The precision is truly incredible and when you analyse the stonework, it looks like a huge three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. Each block is manipulated with such precision that some of them have several exposed surfaces with multiple corners and angles. They look as though they have been moulded into form or bent to fit around corners, but this truly is precision stonework at its best. One of the most peculiar things though is that on the internal eastern wall is one huge black granite construction block. It is in the base course and is slightly proud of the surface of the rest of the pink granite wall. Nobody has successfully explained the significance of the black stone or why it is not flush with the rest of the structurally perfect wall. It appears to have been slid into place at a time after the temple wall was built. The eastern temple wall lies precisely on the northern meridian of the so-called gateway to the underworld, as mentioned in a previous video. Could the block therefore be covering an entrance to a subterranean passage that leads to this gateway? If we can't excavate inside the Muslim and Coptic cemetery, is this block marking another way inside? Like the lower courses of the Menkore Pyramid and the Wall of the Crow, the Valley Temple of Khafre displays a remarkable similarity to the complex stone walls seen in South America. 
Stone structures seen at Alante Tambo, Cusco and Machu Picchu share striking similarities. Just look at the Corakancha Temple in Cusco and compare this to what we see at Giza in Egypt. Is this really the work of two cultures that developed separately or one ancient culture that settled in two different locations many thousands of years ago? Both cultures could fashion enormous stone blocks, transport and place them with incredible precision, creating stylistically similar monuments that have stood the test of time. The Valley Temple and the adjacent Sphinx Temple both contain this style of stonework and most independent researchers agree that far from being created during the reign of King Khafre, they are in fact two of the oldest monuments on the Giza Plateau and were simply renovated or reused by the Old Kingdom Pharaoh. This is because the huge blocks of limestone used to make the two temples were quarried from around and in front of the Sphinx. This fact shows unequivocally that the Valley Temple must originally be around 10,000 years old, if we are to believe the geological dating of the Sphinx put forward by Robert Schock. Whether or not you believe Schock's claims, the Caffrey Causeway certainly cuts across the Giza Plateau and forms the southern boundary wall of the Sphinx enclosure, which shows that the Causeway and hence the Valley Temple must surely be the same age as the Sphinx. The inventory stealer, as discussed in my previous video, I believe is a credible source that proves that the Great Sphinx predates the reign of not just Khafre, but also his forebear King Khufu, which, together with the geological analysis of Robert Schock, certainly gives the Valley Temple a much earlier age than the mainstream view. Researcher Andrew Collins believes that the Pyramid of Khafre, its causeway and the Valley Temple were some of the first monuments on the plateau. This is because it is believed that causeways from the pyramids extended out to the shoreline of the River Nile, and because the causeway of the Khafre Pyramid is much further west than the current western limits of the River Nile, the Valley Temple must be a truly ancient monument. This also means that Khafre's Pyramid was likely planned and constructed before the Great Pyramid, because the Great Pyramid's causeway extended out much further east as the Nile migrated. The Khafre Pyramid also includes enormous cyclopean blocks, which certainly infer an early origin. As noted in previous videos, I have shown that the lowermost stonework of the Menkore Pyramid may be even older still, with the bottom courses of casing stone up to a height of around 15 meters, made of interlocking blocks of granite similar to what we see at the Valley Temple. So, to recap some key points from recent videos, I believe the history of Giza starts with a natural, primordial hill of Gebel Ghibli, the Wall of the Crow and the subterranean passage known as the House of Sokar. This was ancient Rostau. From here the ancient architects planned the Giza Plateau, firstly building the Menkore Pyramid, followed by the Sphinx, Khafre Pyramid, the Valley Temple and the Sphinx Temple all of which were likely linked in some way with possible evidence hidden behind the black stone of the Valley Temple. The natural hill on top of which the Great Pyramid was built was then worked and then the pyramid, the crowning glory of these ancient stoneworks was finally constructed. The ancient people from the first time known as Zep Tepi built a geometrically aligned sacred landscape encoding and preserving the advanced knowledge of an our lost ancient civilization. When the work began, we can only speculate, but maybe these early inhabitants of Egypt were the survivors from the end of the last ice age, when I and many believe this lost civilization became split up and resettled in various parts of the globe. The narrative is ours to piece together bit by bit. Whatever the truth, I believe the monuments of the Giza Plateau clearly predate the mainstream historical narrative, and the Valley Temple is yet another example of this. To me, this clearly isn't the work of Old Kingdom Ancient Egyptians. Almost all of the alternative researchers are now in universal agreement that Giza has a truly ancient origin, being hundreds if not thousands of years older than the reigns of Khufu and Khafre. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.